Yet another feature, though, of this time are the robber barons, or really, the capitalist. These were the men who became tycoons. These were the men who became the wealthiest in all of the world, the very first millionaires. In fact, what's curious about these men is that most of them made their fortune in some connection to agriculture. Their connected fortune was often associated with that great drive out west and that great planting of farms. Men like John Deere, who his tractor company and his steel plow company produced an incredible amount of wealth for himself and for his family. Or men like Cyrus McCormick, for example. There were others. Men, for example, such as the brothers Philip and Herman R. Moore, who found founded a great meat packing company, which still produces several products to this day. Or the German immigrant Adolphus Busch, who founded a brewing company better known as Anheuser-Busch. Or the famous family from Minneapolis, which produced a great amount of baked goods. They were simply known as the Pillsbury family. Well, all of these various millionaires, all of these incredible businesses, they always led in innovation. They always led in the creation of wealth. For example, if you look at U.S. manufacturing, the production of actual things that we make in factories prior to the Civil War, you'll see that most manufacturing, most things that were produced in a factory that we had as citizens in this country before the Civil War were actually made somewhere else, like England or Germany, for example. But after the Civil War, more and more factories began to be made by these capitalists. More and more centers of production and manufacturing came into being so that by the year 1894, not only did the U.S. not really import any manufactured goods, but the U.S. was actually the number one manufacturer in all of the world, period. In fact, the U.S. produced so much that it exported most of its goods, which produced an incredible amount of wealth for all who owned those factories and also by, con by, uh, by trickling down to all who worked for them. What's incredible about this is it was based upon several things. For one, it was based upon the incredible resources that we had as a nation. It was based upon all of that agricultural movement. It was based upon our access to incredible fuels. And even though the common worker sometimes did have to work in difficult conditions, and even though this is the day of union uh, or of labor unions, uh, labor unions which actually provided better working conditions for men, it did provide an incredible increase in the standard quality of life because it provided us incredible access to basic things like clothing and dishes and automobiles and various technology that we could commonly own and often own in great numbers in a way that we never could before. But it was also based upon innovation. In fact, by 1911, there would be officially one million patents for new technology in the U.S. Patent Office. So it really was driven by the drive for innovation and by the drive for competition. And it's true, they did build gilded palaces, and they were in many ways worldly. They were in many ways far too concerned with this present world. But when we, as people of later years, look back on them and wish to judge them for their extreme wealth, we often have to ask ourselves the question of why are we doing so? Is it because that wealth was attained through unethical or immoral means? Or is it simply because we are jealous? And often it's the latter. Most of the time, these men earn their fortunes because they were incredibly hardworking, they were incredible savers, and quite honestly, they provided something that everybody wanted. And when people do that and are successful, we often become jealous of them, even though they provide something to us that we actually want.